Okay, so let us look at what we're going to learn for this anaerobic respiration. So as we know that NAD can be regenerated, right? NAD can be regenerated two ways, actually. One, the first way, actually, when O2 present. When O2 presents, then hydrogen atom can be transferred to the ETC by reduced NAD, and NAD molecule can be regenerated, cannot be passed to ETC, because O2 can act as the final electron receptor. But when O2 absent, this is one good question here, because when O2 absent, then those reduced NAD in the cytoplasm, what we can do with them? Glycolysis will stop or not? So the answer is no, glycolysis won't stop. Are you clear? Why? Because we do have the anaerobic respirations occur to regenerate this NAD molecule. Okay, so how we generate? When oxygen is not present, hydrogen atom carried by NAD cannot be removed by the combinations with oxygen. So it means that the electron transfer chain stop functioning. So no further ATP is synthesized by oxidative phosphorylation. So reduced NAD cannot be reoxidized, and we know that link reaction and Krebs cycle will stop. Okay, so under anaerobic condition, if a cell is not is uh, is to net uh. If the cell want to net gain or continuously two ATP of the mo ATP molecule, then we have to pass this hydrogen atom during this anaerobic respiration. And we're going to look at these two pathway: alcoholic fermentation, okay, and lactic fermentation. Okay. <clears throat> Let us look at the yeah, uh, alcoholic fermentation pathway or ethanol fermentation pathway that take place inside the yeast. Okay, so if you look at the general uh, in terms of the process, so glycolysis first, okay? So when we have one molecule of glucose, six carbon, undergo a series of reactions, and we get triose phosphate. Right. Okay, so in this process, actually we do have the input of Two ADP, we get two ADP cradle. Okay, then we get two molecules of triose phosphate. Okay, we get two, okay, so three carbon. Now, what happened actually here? Triose phosphates were going to be oxidized cradle, into pyruvate. So two molecule, three carbon. So in this process, we do know that overall, uh, overall, we're going to have four ADP to become four ATP, and we do have the NAD to become reduced NAD. Kind of in glycolysis process. Okay, uh? so two molecule. Two molecule. So this actually is a glycolysis process. Correct? Glycolysis process takes place inside the cytoplasm. So if you look at this, so with O2, no problem, spiral will enter into the mitochondria. But without O2, then pyruvate the will stay inside the cytoplasm. Are you clear? Without O2 or we call it as the anaerobic conditions. So let us look at what actually happened. Because without O2, without O2, how we can regenerate back? Okay, this is the main question here. Are you clear? If without, okay, if let's say mitochondria without the O2, so stop everything. In glycolysis, if let's say we cannot regenerate back NAD, NAD again act as a limiting factor, eh? the concentration acts as a limiting factor. Therefore, again, you won't be able to continue to have the glycolysis. Correct or not? Okay, so let us look at the process now. So glycolysis, we do know that glucose, okay, one molecule of glucose, you get two molecules of triose phosphate. 
ATP. So this triphosphate will be oxidized to pyruvate. Two molecule, three covered. Okay, three covered. So one of the important steps here, okay, the important steps we do know that we spend two ATP in the energy investment phase. And we collect back four ATP. So it means that overall we have a net gain of two ATP per glucose molecule. Okay, we have net gains of two ATP per glucose molecule. Okay, and in this process, because it's an oxidation, so we need to have the NAD. So NAD actually do what? Okay, uh, sorry, let me put it this way better. So in this process, we do know that hydrogen atom is released to hydrogen atom. So this hydrogen atom will be taken up by the NAD to form two reduced NAD. But the thing here is, if we don't have sufficient NAD, this glycolysis process will stop, you won't get a net gain of two ATP already. Can you see that? You won't get a net gain of two ATP. So what we need to do now, so in yeast, yeast will carry out this, what we call the alcoholic fermentation pathway, or we call as ethanol fermentation pathway. So in this case, pyruvate will be decarboxylated, Okay, pyruvate will be decarboxylated to form ethanol, which is two carbon, two molecule of them. Are you clear? So this process is a decarboxylation. So CO2 will be released. So how many molecule? Two molecule of CO2 because two pyruvate, right? So two molecule of CO2 released. So can you see that the three carbon, the three carbon become two carbon. So decarboxylations take place, become ethanol. Okay, so what happened here is ethanol will be reduced to form ethanol. Ethanol is two carbon, so two molecules. So what they do, how ethanol can be reduced. So it means that this reduced NAD now release hydrogen atom. Okay, they release these two hydrogen atoms for the ethanol. Ethanol receive this. Okay, ethanol receive this hydrogen atom. It is out now reduced. So it means that in this process, you can see that reduce NAD. Okay, two molecules reduce NAD. Now regenerate back NAD and release the hydrogen atom. And this hydrogen atom now combined with the ethanol to form ethanol. So this process allows us to regenerate back the NAD. So if we regenerate back the NAD, so means that glycolysis can continue to take place. So means that even though not enough, ox uh, not enough ATP, but we still can have a net gain of two ATP. As long as glycolysis continue, we still can have a small yield of ATP. Okay, so few things that we need to know. What is the name of the enzyme involved here? This is decarboxylation. So it means the enzyme is decarboxylase. So the enzyme is called pyruvate decarboxylase. Okay, the name of the enzyme, pyruvate decarboxylase. For ethanol to be converted to ethanol, the name of the enzyme here is ethanol. Okay, D, uh, in this case, dehydrogenase. Okay, ethanol dehydrogenase. So in this case, we dehydrogenase from who? We remove the hydrogens now from the reduced NAD, pass it to ethanol, therefore we get ethanol. So the enzyme involved here is ethanol dehydrogenase. And too bad, these reactions, huh? these reactions, is irreversible. So it means that you won't be able, you won't be able to reverse the ethanol back to ethanol and then back to the pyruvate. Are you clear? So whatever energy stored in this ethanol 
okay, the plants, okay, the yeast cannot metabolize it. So this ethanol will be accumulated. So that's why we have the, uh, the formation of the wine, granite. Okay, so this ethanol will be remain there. So high concentration ethanol will kill the yeast cell. So at the end, we can collect the ethanol, okay, in the wine, in the bill, or in this, uh, the, uh, what we call this, whiskey productions, okay? So we're going to use this method, okay? So irreversible. Okay, so in the pastry, okay, we make cake, okay, we make that means the, the, uh, the bread, so we also use the yeast. Why? Because the anaerobic condition in the yeast actually produces the CO2 to give rise to this the bread dough, cranot. Okay, so again, guys, you can see that this is the in the yeast. Okay, so when you need, you can take a photo for this one. So in muscle cells, now mammal muscle cell. Okay, so again, same thing. We do have the glucose. We start with the glucose. Okay, so glucose actually, uh, wait, why two? Again, for glucose, one molecule of glucose, three carbon, it's three carbon, one, six carbons, okay? So first, we split it into a triose phosphate. So two molecule three carbon, and then we get the pyruvate. So two molecule, three carbon. So important step here, the major step, okay? So we spend two ATP, and we collect back four ATP. Okay, so during this process, we need to oxidize our, our triosphosphate cannot. So the oxidation of triosphosphate okay, releases the hydrogen atom. Two. Okay, so this hydrogen atom will be received by who? Will be received by the NAD. Too huge. Okay, received by NAD. So NAD now is reduced to reduce NAD. So in this case, two NAD, two. So our aim here, actually, what is our aim? Our aim is to continue to, uh, to continue the glycolysis, eh? to continue glycolysis. At least we have a net gain of two ATP, cranot. okay? So in this case for pyruvate, Pyruvate won't undergo the decarboxylation in MAMO. Pyruvate straight away can receive. Okay, pyruvate straight away receive the hydrogen atom from reduced NAD. So pyruvate is re reduced to lactate or lactic acid, which is three carbons, eh, two molecules of that. Okay, so this reduced NAD regenerate back right, NAD by releasing. H atoms, two molecule H atom. So this H atom will be received by the lactate. So this H atom, can I see that hydrogen atom? So because the lact, uh, this uh, pyruvate, pyruvate receive hydrogen atom. So pyruvate is reduced. So in this case, guys, you can see that pyruvate now receive hydrogen atom. It itself now is reduced to lactate. Now be careful, but many, many times, I did my student, con I'm not confused, but callous. Lactate become lactase. Be careful, uh, two different things. Uh, one is T, one is S, totally different. Uh, don't tell me typo. I know it's typo, but no. I mean, I won't give you guys I mean, credit in this case, the award credit because, okay, lactate. Okay, uh, okay uh, so two lactate, is uh, uh, produced, so this process is called reduction. So lactate is reduced and then uh, reduce NAD. Now, it gets the NAD regenerate back and also the hydrogen atom. So this hydrogen atom will be received by lactate. So this process is called oxidation. I play so one release one obtain it okay so uh, one question asked here what is the two okay uh, i write here means two lactate so for one glucose you are going to get the two lactate 
lactate. Are you clear? Clear. So we see that reduction process take place, pyruvate weight is reduced to lactate. Now, one good thing here is when O2 available, the process is reversible. Okay, so means that this lactate in the muscle will be transferred in the blood, okay, will be transferred in the blood, okay, and then enter into the liver cells where we're going to oxidize this, okay, we change them to the pyruvate and then we oxidize it, okay, or we can actually change them to the glucose and then we store them as a glycogen. Are you clear? Okay. Uh. So uh, reduce it. Okay, the size. Then you can make uh, copy. So okay. So as I say, that we have two. One is alcoholic fermentation. Another one is a lactic fermentation. So in alcoholic fermentations. Okay, you can try this uh, exercise. Okay, uh, two minutes. Okay, so let us do, uh, check the answer here. So in alcohol fermentations, okay, so pyruvate, okay, is converted to ethanol, which is two carbon in two steps, okay? So the first step release carbon dioxide, so the process is termed as decarboxylation from the pyruvate, eh, which is converted to two carbon compound known as acetaldehyde or ethanol. So in the second step, acetal is reduced, okay, acetaldehyde or ethanol is reduced by the reduced NAD to form ethanol by the enzymes alcohol dehydrogenase or ethanol, more specifically, ethanol dehydrogenase. Okay, so this process helps us to regenerate the supplies of NAD or NAD plus needed for the continuations of glycolysis. So that, therefore, we can continue to produce a small number of ATP. So yeast carry out this alcohol fermentation. For thousands of years, humans have used the yeast in the brewing, wine making, and baking. Okay, so the carbon dioxide bubble generated by baker yeast during alcohol fermentation around, right, allowed the bread to rise. Okay. Lactic fermentation, so similar in this process. So with reference to figure 5.21, describe the process of lactic fermentation. So basically very simple. Humans muscle cells synthesize ATP by lactic acid fermentation or lactic fermentation when oxygen is, okay, uh, is limited. Okay? So during the, the process, pyruvate is reduced directly okay, by reduced entity to form lactate, which is the ionized form of lactic acid okay, as the end product with no release of CO2, so no decarboxylation. So this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. So the NAD plus is, okay, or the NAD is regenerated, allow the glycolysis to continue in anaerobic conditions, okay? So let us compare, okay? Let us compare between these two process have done for this part. Okay, you can take a photo, you need. Okay. So now next, let us compare the differences between the alcoholic and lactic fermentation pathway. So what kind of cells actually carry out alcoholic fermentations? So yeast or plant cells, they carry out alcoholic fermentation. Lactate, mammalian muscle, okay? Decarboxylations, yes. Decarboxylation take place in the alcoholic fermentation. Lactate, no decarboxylations, okay? Huh? End products of alcoholic fermentations, we have ethanol, lactate fermentation, we have lactic acid or lactate. So enzyme involved in the dehydrogenation, alcohol, we have alcohol dehydrogenase or ethanol. Dehydrogenase. Okay. So for lactate fermentations, you have lactate dehydrogenase. Okay. So number of steps involved alcoholic fermentation is a two-step process. Okay, lactate fermentations, only one step. So what are the intermediate compounds that form in the alcoholic fermentation? Yes, we have ethanol or acetaldehyde that form during alcoholic fermentations, but lactates, we don't have the intermediate compound, okay? Because the pyruvate directly uh, reduced. 
okay, by the reduce and AD. So is the, pro, eh, is, uh, is the process reversible? So alcoholic fermentation, irreversible. So whatever we have, the alcohol will be there, it will be wasted. Are you clear? Because the plants and the yeast won't be able to uh, metabolize the alcohol. So that's why alcohol can kill that. Lactate, yes, it's a reversible process. Okay, so with this, I have done for today class. Any more questions from you guys? Yes or no? Any questions? I have to record first. 